At 829, a witness tells North Braddock Police that shots are fired by a passenger in a car and fired at particular persons. Excuse me, 911 further describes the vehicle. Uh, the, ve the description of the vehicle is wrong. They describe it as a gold mercury. They also describe the direction the vehicle left the area. At 8.30, a victim, a white male, is identified. 911 indicates gunshot wound to the abdomen. Ultimately, it's determined there's a grazing wound across the stomach that may be attributable to a bullet, may be attributable, attributable to a fragment from a building. Now, these matters, obviously, evidence continues to be developed. So as more evidence is developed, the description of the vehicle becomes uh, a light gold Chevy Cruze. The scene is secured by the Allegheny County Police shortly after the incident takes place. Uh, the Allegheny County Police, by the way, handle major crimes outside the city of Pittsburgh throughout Allegheny County. The uh, victim, the person that was grazed across the stomach, is treated and released. Why are they shooting at him? No, I'm recording this. Why are they shooting? They All they did was run and they're shooting at them. There is video surveillance at this intersection. That video is attached as an exhibit to the criminal complaint, actually to the affidavit of the criminal complaint. What it shows is the crews comes up Baldridge. There are three occupants in the car, driver, front seat passenger, uh, rear passenger side. The rear window comes down, a handgun goes out that window and opens fire on somebody at the corner. We believe we know who the target is, but the target is not identified in the, in the affidavit. The person who is shooting the weapon has a dark colored t-shirt on. The passenger in the front seat has a white t-shirt on. There's a man in North Braddock who is across the street. He's not the intended victim. He returns fire. When they process the scene, there are nine casings that go back to a 40 millimeter handgun. That's the handgun from the car. And there are four casings from the 45. Now from the 45, he strikes the crews three times. One goes in the rear window, one goes into the trunk to the right of the uh, license plate, and the third one goes into the driver's side, or the, excuse me, the passenger side door. There are multiple strikes on a wall, which is maybe about 10 to 15 feet from where the crews comes up Baldridge, and that's where the intended target was. 13 minutes into processing this particular crime, the crimes that, that occurred in North Braddock, a call comes in and says shots are fired in East Pittsburgh. When detectives arrive, the scene is secure, the victim, Antoine Rose had already been transported to McKeesport Hospital. It takes approximately five minutes to get from the site in North Braddock to the site where shots are fired in East Pittsburgh. The driver of the vehicle is in custody. The passenger with the dark t-shirts in the wind, they have several departments that are looking for him. That person is later identified as Zay Zaywan, I'm not pronouncing that properly, Hester, Z-A-I-J-U-A-N, Hester. He is the shooter in North Braddock. By all accounts, Mr. Rose never did anything in furtherance of any crimes in North Braddock. I know there's been some speculation in the meeting. Uh, yesterday, or possibly the day before, Hester was apprehended by the sheriff's fugitive team. He was, he's currently lodged at Human Center. He'll be charged with various crimes under what's, what we refer to as Act 33 under Pennsylvania law. He will, he'll come into the, uh, the adult side of the courts. Now, this is significant to the car. Even though the car was struck three times, there's no blood evidence in the car. None of the passengers were struck in North Braddock. In East Pittsburgh, there are three spent casings that are recovered. They all go back to a 9 millimeter, nine millimeter weapon. That's the weapon of uh, Michael Rossfeld. There are two witnesses that are proximate to the location of the shooting. There is a video. Uh, from talking to the family this morning, we like to get the phone. We don't have the phone right now. We have the YouTube version of that video. Um, it's significant because we want to enhance it a little bit more. The driver is extracted from the vehicle. He's on the ground. As the officer begins to put cuffs on him, the two passengers get out of the car. According to the witnesses, Rose shows his hands, turns, and runs. He is not in possession of a weapon. Neither is the, uh, the other passenger in the, in the dark t-shirt. There's another witness with a video. He's using a camera, camera phone. The video doesn't add much to the, uh, to the evidence in the case. The car was processed, and they found two weapons in the vehicle. One is a 9 millimeter weapon that was stolen. It's under the front seat towards the front of the car. The 40 caliber was also stolen. It goes back to three or four other crimes. It's under the front seat in, towards the rear. And it is the 90 caliber weapon that was used in connection with the shooting in North Braddock. The medical examiner did the autopsy and uh, 
submitted various reports. Antoine Rose was hit three times. He was hit in the side of the face, in the cheek. The bullet exits through the nasal cavity. He's also hit in the right elbow from the rear. That's a through and through wound. He's hit in the mid back and that slug was recovered in his chest. That's the fatal shot. As I said before, those not, that nine millimeter slug matches Rossfeld's service weapon. The at scene Facebook posting is consistent with the independent witnesses' statements. And as I said before, there's no weapon that would have created a, a risk to Officer Rossfeld. Based on that evidence, I find that Rossfeld's actions were intentional, and they certainly brought about the result that he was, look, he was looking to accomplish. He was not acting to prevent death or serious bodily injury. It's my position that he is not entitled to a justification charge to a jury as a defense, inasmuch as under Pennsylvania law, if you are effectuating an arrest, you have to show the person to be arrested has committed a forcible felony. As I said already, Antoine Rose didn't do anything in North Braddock other than be in that vehicle. And you have to possess a weapon. Neither of those young men were in possession of a weapon. Or you have to otherwise indicate that somebody is in a position to take human life, and that is not the case here. Now these are based upon jury instructions in a superior court case out of Philadelphia. Uh, an appeal was taken to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, which was denied. Now this is the third time that we've had this factual scenario during my tenure, the first two date to the beginning, the beginning of my tenure. Um, you're aware that I directed that uh, one count of criminal homicide be filed in connection with this case as it was in the prior two, given the same scenarios. Uh, I credit our chiefs of police and the ladies and gentlemen of law enforcement for getting it. So for instance, last year alone, we had 1.2 million, in excess of 1.2 million calls to law enforcement. And we looked into two matters which involved police use of deadly force. That's still too, too many, but just to give you the numbers. Steve, did you offer to recuse yourself based on the conflict of interest in the family's life? No. What's my con? Can you tell us about the driver of the vehicle? Dri as best we can tell, he's a, uh, like a, a Uber driver, Jitney. Um, he's very forthcoming. Of course, he's looking at you know driving somebody to the scene of a, a shooting has criminal implications. So he was, he was very forthcoming with county police. The charges against the officer? Uh, one kind of criminal homicide. The evidence supports third degree murder. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Manslaughter, voluntary manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter. But we think we should have the right to argue uh, murder in the first degree. For first degree murder, that's life. Third degree is 20 to 40 years. Manslaughter is three and a half to seven. Steve, can you break down why you think a third degree murder It's an intentional act and it's done recklessly and there is no justification for it. Officer Rosefeld in the affidavit says that he believed that uh, Antoine Rose uh, was in a dark object. Uh, you dispute that, sir? Uh, his, we took a statement from Rosfeld. He's on audio and video. He indicates that at no time was there a weapon in play. Did you feel pressure to charge in this case? No, sir. I've been, in, I've been doing this for a long time. The community protests, the outrage from the family, you felt no pressure at all to charge? No, I did not. As I said, this is the third time we've had this, this particular fact scenario during my tenure. Charged the first two times, we're charging this time. How would you describe the actions of Officer Rossfeld that night? I think I just did. Do you believe Antoine Rose fired a gun at all then? No, he did not. It makes a different statement later. The uh, complaint describes that as inconsistency. Can you explain the differences between what he said and what he used? Well, he specific, specifically says that he didn't see a weapon. Said, That's significant. In the, in the statement, though, he said that he believed, believed that he saw a dark object. Yeah, that's, that, that's inconsistent with the witness statements. It's inconsistent with the YouTube video. A gun or just something he believes is a gun? The jury instruction says there has to be a deadly weapon. Did Officer Rossfeld express that he was afraid at the time of the shooting, and if so, why didn't he fire a cutter? I don't know that. I know he was remorseful. You know that he was on the that you have a situation like this. Did you say that the other two cases were? Yeah, one involved the city of Pittsburgh police officer on 2nd Avenue, and one involved a housing authority police officer in the Armstrong Tunnels. Both times, all three times, somebody was shot in the back, and they were not a threat to the, to the police officer who was engaged in whatever aspect of uh, their job. Was Officer Russell uh, on a taser as well? Would he have used a taser? I can only tell you that Antoine was about 15 yards before he collapsed. So he starts on the passenger side of a relatively small vehicle, but I doubt that a taser could have been used. Steve, can you talk about the previous shooting in North Braddock and what impact that would have had on shooting in East Pittsburgh on Officer Rossfeld when he does stop a car involved in a, he suspects it's 
was involved in that felony uh, shooting just 13 years earlier. Does he go in with apprehension then? I mean, can you address that? that affect the decision to charge him or not? I think you got to go in with apprehension. But unless you see a genuine threat, then it's inappropriate to take, in fact, criminal to take somebody's life. And that's the, that's the reason you brought the charges? Primarily, yes. Was the foot chase an option, did he say, or was there any evidence that he attempted a foot chase? Well, their training, their training says you disable the vehicle first, which he did. Take the driver out, keys out, show me your hands, that type of thing. You got three guys in the car. You wait for backup. So he's taking three guys out of the car before backup gets there. At the end of the criminal complaint, the detectives know that he told two different versions of events. Slight inconsistencies. Can Actually, I believe it's three. The object, the lack of a gun, then he goes back to an object in his hand. That's a jury question. DA, what's your message to Antoine's family? We had, a, we had a very nice conversation. They're, they're very decent people. Obviously, they're, they're very distraught about the loss of their son, who by all indications is, is a good kid. Um, I'm going to keep that private between us, but uh, it, was, it, it was a good conversation. And to the community? You, you can't take somebody's life under these circumstances. Steve, you said previously that Antoine Rose had a in his pocket. Yes. Yeah, we're speculating. The gun was stolen. The clip is what the original clip was for the nine millimeter. They changed that out for an extended clip. So instead of nine shots, you have seventeen. They changed it out to the other gun. No, there's a longer clip for the nine millimeter. So instead of nine shots, I think it's seventeen. So are you indicating that Hester fired the shots from that gun and then switched clips? No, there's two. <clears throat> there's two guns in the car. There's a 40 and a 9. Both guns are stolen. The 9's under the front seat. The 9 is never discharged. The 40 is discharged, and it's from the rear seat. And you guys are going to get the video feeds from bo both North Braddock, and you've, you've probably already seen the, the, the feeds on YouTube. But uh, clearly, the person whose arm is out the window with gun extended has a black T-shirt on. And other, there's other evidence, too, that indicates that Hester's the shooter. So where did this empty clip come from? It was in the weapon. In the weapon. Yes. <laughs> clip for the weapon that had been replaced. You take the clip out because it's only nine shots. You take an extended clip and you put it in at 17. It's a trend. So it was never discharged. It's not an empty. The nine millimeter was never discharged. You seem to indicate that he could have just waited for backup rather than trying to do the things he did. Norm You're saying he went against uh, protocol or against training? Normally you wait for backup, yes. When you have multiple persons in the vehicle. You have evidence charging at least third degree murder and then involuntary manslaughter, but you made a decision to go with uh, first degree murder. Yeah, usually we charge criminal homicide, just one count, generally. That goes back to when we had a coroner instead of a medical examiner, because we were getting pretty bad decisions out of the coroner's office. And whether or not that can be justification for also shooting somebody who may have just previously been involved in a potentially serious felony? Generally speaking, an officer has to be in fear of, of death or serious bodily injury. Then you could return that threat with, the, with, with appropriate force. If you're trying to effectuate an arrest, then what you have to show is several things. You have to show that there was a forcible felony. Okay, shooting at somebody in North Braddock could be considered a forcible felony, but it was committed by Rose. It was not committed, excuse me, it was committed by Hester, not by, not by Antoine. But you also have to show that a weapon's involved or that you are otherwise in serious, you know, there's the possibility of serious bodily injury. Those elements clearly are not there. Steve, talking about the, the gun, that you said Antoine Rose did not fire a gun, but him being in the car at that drive-by shooting, does that make him a party to the crime? No. But the driver is a party to the crime? The driver co could be. How, what is the difference there? Well, we need him as a witness. Uh, do you know how Antoine Rose happened to be in that car, or what led up to his decision to be involved in this? Was he... We have, a, we have an idea of motive, but I can't comment on motive, yes. And you know for a fact that Antoine Rose didn't know that this Hester, say Ron Hester, they were acquaintances. Are you clear on that? Yes, they knew each other. Can you talk some more about the danger of not having a policy for procedures? Somebody's dead. Can there be any more dangerous situation? Does that make East Pittsburgh responsible in any way? Criminally? No. Civilly? They're gonna. They get a lot of answering to do. Given the clip in his pocket that he was shooting the front seat passenger and whoever was under the seat or on the front seat, do you infer that he was in possession of a stolen weapon based on on that? You can infer that. Yes. There's a, there's other evidence, but that's really of no moment when we're talking about 
a homicide. So it's not relevant to uh, uh, the officer's actions or his status, uh, Rose's own uh, status in that instance? The possession of an empty clip? No. It doesn't have anything to do with a thought process.